so let's let's uh, start uh, the webinar uh, hello glad to welcome you all to the webinar uh, i am your host karan thank you for taking time to join us today as we talk about accelerating digital transformation with process mining you will leave with an understanding of why process mining is the first forward toward operational excellence transforming organizations to be future ready why and how salonus tools meets the expectations of process mining and how enovis adds value to the table for customers and to make sure we are helping you as best as we can on process mining we have a chat box to source your questions so without further ado let me introduce you to the pros who will talk about process mining our first speaker is saranan from enovis who has over 6 years of experience in information technology space he aids clients in their digital transformation journey with the help of specialized technologies such as process mining process modeling robotic process automation and ai he has developed deep expertise in salonus implementation dashboard creation and kpi analysis our second speaker is neil from salonus who has 7 years of experience in supply chain and manufacturing ops supporting with automation and digital transformation with various business units since joining salonus in 2021 neil has taken on the role of support salonus ecosystem of partners to build and launch innovative ap applications onto the marketplace let me invite uh, rupak who heads the bpi practice at enovis to set the agenda for today's webinar thank you karan uh, welcome all uh, to start with i must say that with process mining we are pleased to find organizations getting empowered to optimize simplify and develop sustainable processes to support responsive and improved operations now isn't that wonderful won't all the organizations are eager to get on to this effective developments for the digital transformation journey so with that intention and thought in mind i welcome you one more time to this webinar to share some of our insights to how you can accelerate digital transformation with process mining the agenda is as follows we will first go through about enovis who we are and what we are about we will then dive into process mining and its mechanics to learn how process mining provides measurable insights to analyzing the footprint of every transactions within the systems and its business processes followed by value proposition of course what we we all want to know right what it brings to enterprises in this constantly changing business dynamics and in competitive marketplace and the most importantly we are so glad that we have our partner salon is with us and neil who is a very able and supportive for building the ecosystem with help of salonis efs he will talk about salonis and its distinguished distinguished capabilities in process mining followed by salonis demo into operational analytics for our manufacturing use case and and of course we'll go through some key to get a key takeaways before we open for question and answers so let's first that take a deep dive into salonis and before that let, let me go over some of the aspects on about enovis we are very proud to be the digital transformation expert who is client focused and have our industry specialized consultants spread across global extra across globe our head office is in new jersey with our operations in india and of course uh, we have innovation lab out in canada the key fee thing which i can share about enovis having worked with enovis for some time now that we partner with our customers with the main objective is to achieve greater success by aligning digital transformation with your organizational strengths system and culture we build confidence in the digital journey to responsive value aid and transparent solutions that work uniquely for you and as you can see our key competencies which we help to provide solutions and services to our customers are in process intelligence 
wherein we provide solutions covering process modeling, process mining, process automation and tax mining. And secondly, of course, it follows by automation and both goes hand in hand in the digital transformation journey. And solutions involves like robotic process automation, intelligent process automation, which involves IDP, which is document processing using AI and ML models, intelligent decision engine and conversational AI, which is so critical now with the chatbot and speech recognition for customer support and quick response to support the needs of customers. Of course, we are, they are, these are some of the few clients we have listed where PepsiCo, SHI, uh, Centene in our healthcare and uh, finance, we are working closely with First Third Bank. But the, the current webinar, I think you are quite awaited, is about process owners with you all as a business leads and people who are technology centric, wanted to learn about what is process mining. It is about how process owners can visualize the processes and operations, the bottlenecks, redundancy in the real time, and drive operational effectiveness with Salonis process mining. And having said that, I would live to uh, get my senior consultant, Sarvanan, take us to the journey into Salonis and talk further on it. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Rupak. Uh, thank you so much for uh, setting the uh, context of the webinar. So, as you rightly pointed out, right, uh, in Today's business scenario, uh, digital transformation has been the buzzword and uh, every business wants to transform and optimize their process in order to stay uh, very competitive. But the imminent question in everyone's mind is that where or how do I begin this journey? What is the starting point for this transformation? And the answer to it lies with process mining. Process mining is a platform uh, designed to discover, monitor, and improve the business processes using the data that is available from the system. So if one has to improve their existing process, the first and foremost thing is to have a clear understanding of how our current process looks like. What are the pain points or challenges in my operations? What are the deviations and bottlenecks that are slowing down my entire process where I'm incurring cost, where my resources are underutilized, and how my key performance indicators are performing with respect to my competitors and with respect to industry standard. These are the essential questions I need to address if I have to transform or optimize my process. So traditionally, like in the last couple of decades, if you look at a process study or a process assessment, it is usually done in a manual way. Usually a process consultant, he interacts with the uh, SMEs and uh, process owners and executives to gather information such as the cycle time, the volume, the pain points, and so on and so forth. The, ch the main challenge with this approach is that it is tedious, it is time consuming, and most importantly, it is subject to bias and personal assumptions. This is where process mining comes into picture. It overcomes all these challenges by collecting various information that are relevant to the process from the last six months or one year of data directly from the source system and then creating the process flow diagram of how the process has actually happened in the past. We will see more on the data collection in the upcoming slides. For now, to answer the question of why do we need process mining, we have classified it into under three buckets. The first one is to accelerate digital transformation by identifying opportunities for process improvement. The second capability is to compare processes with ideal or reference model. So process mining has this capability to upload a BPMN format and compare how the actual process has fared with respect to the ideal model and it helps to pinpoint the gaps that are there in our process. The third capability under accelerating digital transformation is the internal benchmark, which is a very powerful feature to address the problem of information silos. 
a business may operate or across different geos or might have multiple business units that are operating independently so what process mining does is that it lets us to compare the processes that is operating in two different regions or two different business units and helps us to capture the best practices that is happening in one region or one business unit and evaluate whether the same practice can be replicated across all the other business units or regions making the whole organization more standardized and more lean the second bucket is that the decision making it helps us to derive insights based on actual data and enables to quantify the impact that a solution could have in a process so we will see more on this on the uh, on our demo the third one is the continuous improvement so far we have discussed about uploading the historic data and identifying the uh, uh, gaps in the process not only it can do that it can also helps to continuously monitor the data either on a daily basis or on a weekly basis to track the kpis and also the govern the overall process using this process mining tool so with this let's move on to the next slide right so as we could see that we have listed down some of the key highlights that's talk about uh, the automated process discovery the transparency that you get with the data and it is much much faster to implement than the uh, traditional approach and you can quantify the benefit and it also also a lot of pre bit connectors where you can plug and play and you can start your process discovery journey and coming to the analysis or the uh, outcomes that we could get out of it the first one is the volume study so it provides details on the number of cases that we have in the process and we can slice and dice it across uh, product categories or regions or vendor or material types the second one is the cycle time analysis so what it does is that it helps us to give the uh, overall tat in the process and we can also customize it to identify the cycle time between any two uh, activities in the process and it can also show us the bottlenecks the sla breaches so on and so forth the third one is the deviation analysis so process mining helps us to identify the non value adding activity in the process through its inbuilt capability or algorithm that predicts the non value adding activities the fourth one is the conformance check as we discussed earlier we can upload a reference model and compare how it fares with our actual process the fifth one of course is the internal benchmark that helps us to compare any two parameters within the organization and identifies the best practices and then the interesting one is the root cause analysis so process mining tools not only helps us to identify the gaps or the uh, bottlenecks it also helps us to navigate and drill down to the root causes of it there is a statement of 80 20 rule that talks about 80 percentage of our problems are caused by 20 percentage of the causes so with this intuitive tool what we can do is that we can exactly spot those 20 percentage of the root causes where i need to focus in order to solve the entire problem and of course the last one is the kpi measure as we discussed it helps us to track and measure the health of the organization over a period of time can we move on to the next slide yes so this is about our partner as uh, rupaka stated that we are extremely privileged to have partnered with selonus as we know that they are the clear market leaders in the process mining space and their evolution over the last 3 4 years has been very exceptional adding new features and capabilities every 6 months so it will be more appropriate for me uh, to invite neel patel the solution manager from solonus to share his thoughts uh, to the audience 
Thanks, everyone. I appreciate that. Really excited about this partnership with Enubis. And um, so let me just d dive right into what we're looking at here. Um, over the past few years, Solonis has quickly become the clear market leader in process mining, according to many of the top market analyst groups, right? Uh, HFS has named Solonis the number one in process intelligence. Everest Group analyzing the process mining space and identifying that Solonis with over 60% of the market share in all verticals, um, which validates also Gardner's remarks as Solonis the dominant leader in the market share perspective. In Forrester's most recent evaluation, they stated process complexity is at, a, at an all-time high and is overwhelming companies um, with the given climate, right? Uh, Real-time insights and elusive, uh, elusiveness is hampering execution. Organizations are failing to optimize processes, losing out on key opportunities. And so with a unique summary, Farser states, Salonis is the Kleenex of process mining, right? And that's great and all, but just to give you some quick um, uh, metrics here, Salonis provides a premium cloud-based enterprise uh, software backed by our SOT, SOS SOC 2 compliance, right? With over 10, million, 10 trillion process activities analyzed, and over 270 pre-built connectors and applications to support a wide variety of source systems and their workflows. Uh, just to jump right into the next slide, please. So what I'd like to introduce to you is um, our execution management system. It's built to reveal and fix in hidden inefficiencies. By connecting the data across your source system, apps, and desktops, it gives you a 360 degree view of your business execution, revealing hidden inefficiencies across systems and processes. It acts as a brain, orchestrating all the moving parts of your people, your processes, and your technologies. And it empowers your teams to operate at their highest level of efficiency and effectiveness, reaching a new level of performance. In effect, EMS does not directly replace any existing systems or technologies, but it acts as an intelligent orchestrator for your execution, uniquely providing you what's required to optimize your process execution and achieve the desired business outcomes. Solonis is a highly secure, hyper-connected, scalable, and robust cloud platform that seamlessly integrates the three main components, real-time data, process intelligence, and target action. With real-time data, we integrate data across your transactional and analytical systems in real-time at scale. To make this fast and easy, we have more than 100 pre-built connectors with all the most frequently used systems. We also offer a low-code, easy-to-use component to build your own data connectors for systems we don't have pre-built connections to. We also ingest data from employee desktops to capture their interactions with the systems from sales and finance documents and from real-time event data streams to render a holistic view of the business. With process intelligence, we apply technologies like process mining and machine learning to visualize what's really happening in your process and surface the digital truth. Think of it like an x-ray of your processes. We make the invisible visible. Then we apply advanced algorithms and machine learning coupled with our deep industry and process domain expertise. We, re we reveal process inefficiencies, which is impossible otherwise to see and to give you recommendations on how to fix them. And finally, Within the same platform, based on those recommendations, Salonis is able to trigger actions to fix the inefficiencies and orchestrate your systems. Some of these actions may simply be to alert someone or a process stakeholder that an undesired event has taken place or in the underlying system, or even to trigger a manual or automated logic to do so. And with this, I'll hand it back to Sarvan to showcase EMS and how it, how it can be leveraged. Thank you, Neil. Uh, thank you for uh, throwing light on uh, the capabilities of Salonus. So here, let's talk about uh, the uh, technical aspect that uh, revolves around process mining. Let us take a look at the, into the high level process stages that pro uh, project travels through. So it starts with establishing the connection with the source system and then pulling out all the relevant information that are required to construct the process flow. We then transform those data into the process mining format. And once we do that, we can configure the dashboard, visualize the process, uh, configure the KPIs according to the business requirement. So far, we have talked a lot about uh, data and event logs as that is the primary driving force. To throw more light onto that, what kind of data we need, let us first discover about what a process is. 
A process is nothing but a set of activities that are performed in sequence in order to accomplish a particular objective. So whenever we perform a particular activity in the system, it leaves out a digital footprint that is stored in the backend tables. So process mining takes these data and stitch, stitches them together using a primary key and then it helps us to draw out the process flow diagram. For it to create this process flow diagram, it essentially needs three information. The first one is the unique key. The unique key or the primary key that helps us to track the entire process. Let's say, for example, if you consider an accounts payable process, then we can consider the invoice number as the primary key that will help us to track the flow from receiving the invoice, processing it, doing a two-way, three-way match, approving it, and then making the payment for that particular invoice. So these are the activities. The second important element is the activity. Uh, activity is nothing but what kind of operation has happened in the source system. The third one is the timestamp. It is nothing but the date and time in which these activities are performed. So that will, this will help us to provide the uh, the cycle time or the throughput time that we would like to measure. Apart from this, there are other factors that we could include in our analysis that are relevant to this uh, to a particular process under study, such as the region. You can include the material cost, the vendor location, so on and so forth. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, to have a closer look at the process mining life cycle, right? So here the first and foremost thing is to select a process that is of strategic importance to the business. And then you list down the activities that are there in the process. You gather the touch points and the underlying applications that are involved in the end-to-end -end process. And then you identify the pain points the KPIs that you would like to measure for this particular process. And second thing is to extract those relevant information that we have identified in the prior stage. Either we can connect with the source system and pull up the data, or we can even upload a flat file in this CSV or XLS format. Once we do the extraction phase, the next comes the transformation. In process mining language, we call it the creation of activity table and case table which is nothing but converting this raw data into uh, the process mining format so once we get the data set ready what we do is we define the parameters and we configure the kpis using a process query language we write the codes that are behind uh, the dashboards and the kpis once we do that we will be able to visualize the process flow we will be able to identify the gaps in the process and then we can recommend appropriate solutions and we can also take actions in some cases with the help of the uh, uh, process mining tool itself. So with this, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so this is uh, the meat of this webinar, which is uh, the demo and uh, the demo is going to be on the operation analytics uh, of a master data management process. In this case, we have taken the material creation. Say, for example, if you have to create a new material or a new vendor or a new cost center, it has to travel through a set of stages, starting with a requester creating a request and then moving on to reviewing the informations that are uh, inputted and then it has to travel through a couple of approvals say business approval the data team approval and then you update those information into the source system later you activate it this is nothing but us uh, the material creation process so if you look at the challenges that are there in the process first is the sla breaches that is from the point of creating the request to getting updated in the system where we able to do it within the defined timeline and most of the time the cases are getting breached the second thing is the material getting rejected due to uh, 
reasons such as incomplete data, uh, incorrect format or incorrect request. So we will also uh, dive into it to have an understanding about why it is happening. Third one is the uh, process variations and bottlenecks in the process and the process non-conformance. With this uh, context, let's uh, quickly dive into the demo. Just a quick thought while Sarvanand is preparing for the demo. Uh, uh, if you have any questions or you have come across anything which you would like to get more in information, please uh, has, don't hesitate to type in in the chat box. After the session, uh, we will have the question answer session and we'll go for those things. So please, yeah, thank you. So, is my screen visible? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Rupak. So what we are seeing right now is created from a sample uh, set of 1,000 records, which uh, resembles the actual material creation process. So the view in front of you is for uh, the executive dashboard which throws uh, light on to the, what are the KPIs that are of prime importance to my process. So on the left, you could see the various uh, material categories that are listed, starting from refresher drink, snacks, and frozen foods. And the two primary uh, metrics, the SLA analysis, which talks about out of these thousand cases, what percentage of my cases are falling within the defined SLA. And the second one is the uh, the rejection analysis, which talks about what percentage is getting rejected. And I want this metric to go down. So as you could see that uh, in this analysis, there are 1,000 cases, out of which 753 cases are within my SLA, whereas 253 are breaching it. I have defined the SLA as 18 days. And I can also see the plans with the lowest throughput time and also, on the other hand, I could see the plans with the highest TAT. Below is the uh, monthly performance of the SLA over a period of time from August to April. I could see how it has fared with respect to its volume. So these KPIs are designed in a way to visually indicate the health of the process. Say, for example, I have set the target of 80, but the SLA is around 75 percentage. That's why it's indicating a orange color. Say, for example, if I have changed this to, uh, say, a 25 day period, then you could see that uh, the indicator automatically turning towards green. So visually, I can check that my SLA is under control. So now my focus area should be on to the rejection rate. So those kind of insights you will be getting out of this particular dashboard. So with this, let us uh, deep dive into each of these components. Right. So what you are seeing on the left is the process explorer, which talks about my entire process flow that starts with the request being submitted and then it wants to the review stage and then you perform a duplicate check. You send it for approval and then the business approval, the data team approval, you update and activate it in system. So this is what we call it as a happy path the or the straight through processing. But this covers only 66 percentage of the total cases, whereas the rest are some sort of a deviations. So let me slightly increase the deviation panel and you could see that an activity called rejected popping out and that happens in close to 230 cases. So as I further increase the deviations, I could see a lot of activities that are emerging from my process diagram. One is the data team getting rejected, which happens in 15 cases. And after rejected, again, it's going for review. And if I further increase it, you could also see a lot of other deviations and channels that are happening in my process. And I also get the actual count of these activities and the cases. Not only this, now let's see the uh, magic of process mining. I can also turn towards the throughput time. To the same analysis, it will throw me what are the bottlenecks that are there in my process. Here could I could spot one thing from data team approval, 
to move into activated health system it is taking me 10 days time which is a potential bottleneck and from request being submitted to review and entering the basic data it is taking me five days this also could be a potential bottleneck in my process and here from business approval to updated system it is taking a four day time period so imagine that if you have to do a similar analysis right without the help of this tool then it becomes close to impossible if you have to do it in a manual way here with the help of Celonis and process mining within a couple of clicks you could see what are the bottlenecks in your activity what are the deviating activities what are the non value adding activities that you would like to eliminate all those information within just a couple of clicks on the right side you could see the frequency distribution the volume the tat and the sla adherence rate and i have slides this data across categories and for each category type i could also see what is the adherence rate i can also use this filter to turn from category to plant wise details and now it will show me what are the plants the volume the cycle time and the SLA adherence rate. With this, I can quickly spot the cases which are below my adherence level and which are performing well as well. So with this, let me move on to the next analysis or the capability of process mining, which is the rejection analysis. We talked about uh, material getting uh, rejected as our uh, primary concern and on the left side you could see the rejection rate and the rejected cases and most importantly the reason for those rejections here you could see that data incomplete happens in 33 percentage of the cases and incorrect cost center happens in 21 percentage of the cases and also the incorrect material request happens in close to 15 percentage of the cases these are my top reasons why my uh, request is getting rejected what i can do is that i can select it and i know that these errors happen because of a requester creating incorrect uh, request or incomplete request and on the bottom i could see the case ids in which these rejections has happened and also the requester's employee id so i can pinpoint and say that this particular incomplete documents are processed or created by these set of requesters and I need to train or focus on these set in order to solve my problem the other interesting and intuitive thing that we have on the right side is the business case for it so what we have done is that we have selected a business case a lot of time we know the problem but without a proper tool we may not quantify it so here I have selected the same reasons here as data incomplete incorrect cost center and incorrect format and now I can put a number to it if you have to quantify the problem so let's say that for all these requests uh, processing time of uh, a data st steward it is around say uh, 15 minutes and similarly for approvals let's say it's taking around 12 minutes so for all these requests the total processing time comes around close to 89 hours but i may not use this information and say that yes for these are the time that is goes waste if i do not fix this problem so i'm going to create a, a a work instruction or a knowledge management tool in order to help these requesters thereby it could reduce the potential by say 80 percentage and I can also show the savings. So this will help me to pitch my solution in a more uh, accurate way, pinpointing the benefits that we'll be achieving out of this. So process mining, it not only identifies the gap, it also talks about the root causes, and it also helps us to validate the root causes and the solution and the impact of it. So with this, let me move on to uh, another feature which is the conformance this is a inbuilt feature that Celonus has so what it does is that 
we can compare an industry benchmark to process and then we can upload it into the Salonis tool and we can actually check how this process has happened. So in this case, we could say that 86% of the my cases are conforming with respect to this standard model that we have uploaded. And so within this, just to chime in a little bit here, um, you know, what we what we have in Salonis is this conformance checker, as uh, Sarvan clearly mentioned. And within the conformance checker, we have a capability and a feature to to map your current process, right? Your BPM model. Um, so you can you can build a BPM model in Salonis, as you can see here. You can also upload one that you currently have built in a different system uh, and directly just plug and play there. You can also check those particular happy path that you're seeing here against the current activities that are happening in your process, which is a really handy tool opposed to having you know your current you know or um, outdated process of of Kaizen events and and you know value stream mapping and understanding you know what's happening what's changing at a very manual level and automating this and, and taking this to the digital transformation of the you know of today's day and age. Great. Thank you, Neil. And continuing on with that, it will also throw us what are the violations that are happening in the process with respect to the uploaded model. Here you could see 27 percentage of the cases. Uh, rejected uh, as as an undesired activity. Four percentage of the cases a request submitted is followed by a duplicate check, which is nothing but skipping a stage in between, which is to review and enter the data. And data team rejected is so another undesired activity, which can, accounts for two percentage of the total cases. So it will list me all the violations that are there in the process. So before we move on to the next slide, I just want to showcase one other capability of a process mining, which is the comparison. So here, as we discussed, we can compare any two processes or materials or regions within my own organization. Here we have taken uh, two plants, one is the plant in AL. We can also select other plants and it will throw us the information of this particular plan. On the right side, we can select another plan, which is a plan Washington, and it will give us information about it. Now I can do a comparative study and say that for this particular plan, it is taking five days, whereas here I am spending an additional six days in order to uh, move from request submitted to review and entering the basic details. Similarly, for review, it's taking two days, whereas here it is taking three days so there is something i am doing well in this particular plan which i have to probe further to understand what is happening and i can replicate the same across all other plants and i can stand aside standardize it so uh, this is one of the last uh, features of process mining that we'll be discussing today now let us move on to the advanced capabilities of the process mining tool or the salonis tool so whatever we have seen right now, uh, it's based on historic data, say last six months or one year of data, and we have identified the gaps with the help of Salonis. But what we are seeing right now is the live data. We can connect Salonis to the live data source, and we can track the KPIs on a day-to-day -day basis. So this views are particularly created for a, a, a process owner. So what I can see here is that I can see the list of cases that are here and what is the current status of it. For example, if 18 days are the my SLA days and if the days near around 15 or 16 days and I st still see that the cases are getting not resolved, what I can do is that I can select these cases and I can send an email, an automated email from Salonis to that particular st stakeholder intimating him to take action and notifying him about the breach. And not only can you send an email directly out of Salonis and, and automate that process uh, or you know um, um, inform that stakeholder of that uh, particular process or case, you can also automate this process leveraging our action flows and action engine where we have uh, several pre-built modules, you know, to your most commonly used RPAs or source systems to to either write back or take an action directly from Salonis and, and automate that particular process without any manual intervention. Yes, thank you, Neil. 
So Celotus has lot of such features uh, or the integration capability with, with lot of third party tools, making it a holistic uh, or clear uh, differentiator from rest of the process mining market. So with this, we have come to uh, the end of the demo and uh, let's go back again to the slides and uh, I'll request Karan to uh, share the slides. So uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Saron and Neil, uh, for the wonderful presentation. Um, I think uh, it was pretty elaborate, and I'm sure our audience must have got pretty significant knowledge and understanding to what process mining is about, what it value it can bring to the organization, and how Salonis can really change the way of how they're operating, simplifying their processes, and building a sustainable processes to support the responsive and improved operations. So what key, te key, te key takeaways we would like to for you to take back? First and foremost is making aware and build that understanding that process mining is first foot forward towards making your organization future ready. And how? Only three things which we consider a prime importance and process mining solves it all and Salonis makes a difference for that. First is accelerating yield transformation effort. You already saw that the wealth of analysis and knowledge you can gain to improve the process upon automate in within the Salonis system itself or maneuvering it to connect with the different uh, applications. That is the first and foremost because without analysis you cannot or accelerate or transform your system. So that is the first. Second is digital decision making, right? Now process mining, as you saw from the demo, as well as from the EMS, which Neil pointed out, provides the ability to combine the process model and data to provide measurable insights by analyzing the footprint of every transaction within the system. And that is very, very, very promising because manually you would completely go crazy, uh, completely can go uh, out of your direction or business gains you want to make or goals you want to achieve. But with process mining, yes, that's possible. And finally, continuous monitoring. You saw in the last demo piece, which Sarvanan shared, that embedding RPA, that is robotic process automation within Salonis or externally, you can help to re redesign your process and improve upon to significantly reduce your process problems across all parts of business. This was one scenario of material management, but it could be many as business is widespread and, in, in, and the expanding at different time and different scenario, uh, different regions. So finally, I would, the second one, which would, we can mention, which is clearly we have been talking so far that Salonis is with the help of EMS, that is execution management system, does, does not directly replace any system or technologies. You don't have to go and change your processes, but it acts as an intelligent orchestrator to your existing execution processes by connecting to your own systems and then help you to optimize your process execution and achieve the desired outcomes. And finally, NOVs. And we are very proud and glad that we are able to bring value to our customers with our solution approach and deep knowledge, which we can gather by analyzing raw data along with the workflow automation, which can be real game changer for all you all enterprise folks in digital transformation journey. And with having said that, uh, we would like to open the floor for any questions, any discussions, what you would like to have. And uh, uh, Saronan and Neil being expert in this field and myself who uh, bring this value and uh, practice together and help your organization would be more than happy to answer any questions if you have. Thank you, uh, Rupak. So, so we have a question uh, from one of the attendees. Uh, what is the difference between BI tool and the process mining tool? So Saron and, and Neil, if you could answer that question. I can take that, Saron, if, if you don't mind. Sure, Neil, go ahead. Yeah. 
Um, you know, this is a question we often get in many of our uh, customer and partner engagements, right? This is a, it's a traditional, uh, hey, what's the difference? Uh, wh why not BI, right? Wh wh what's so great about Salonis uh, uh, process mining and EMS, right? Um, you know, if you ever use BI, you, you know that this, uh, you know, BI is um, is a static tool a little bit by analyzing non-transactional data, right? With Salonis, we're, we're looking at discovering inefficiencies, knowing what action to take, automating that business process. Salonis' EMS combines process mining, analytics, machine learning, and automation to provide that end-to-end -end tool for your business, whereas um, BI is a good tool to have, but it's a more affirmative tool, whereas Salonis is more of a corrective tool, if you will, right? So where it, it an analyzes your transactional event log, where BI does not do this. Thank you, uh, Neil. And uh, we have our next question. Uh, how does process mining help in automation? So uh, maybe I can take that question and Sarun, and maybe you can chime in as well. Uh, so Srinidhi, I appreciate your uh, question. Uh, of, now, from the perspective of process mining, we saw that it first of all identifies the bottlenecks. What are the places where it takes uh, more time compared to the other regions or another material creation in this particular scenario? Now, once you compare that, you definitely get a chance once you analyze, you identify that there are certain process which is not aligned correctly or can you need an improvement. Now, when you are talking about uh, approvals and uh, making sure that the system is going in the right flow, there are things which you can automate, maybe in co connecting the uh, workflow by automating it, by making sure that whenever the things get created, automatically approval request is sent user doesn't have to do a specific step to do that approval second is when the particular process is in a in a particular state automatically the indicator or the notification can go to a customer or the supervisor to follow through and make sure that the things are getting integrated for doing the next step so any of the things what you identify as part of the process bottlenecks or time consuming you can bring automation in place where you don't have to use manual effort. Secondly, you don't have to make sure that you have to review the step after two days or three days, whatever time has to be taken part of the SLA to make sure that either it has to be followed up. And those things, uh, when you are talking about thousands of requests coming in, thousands of approvals required, automation can get this thing streamlined and you just have to on live on live action flows, what you saw in dashboard make sure that everything is going as required. So that is what how process mining can help automation first identifying the bottleneck uh, process inefficiency. And uh, once you uh, qualify that this is true at automation candidate, you can inbuilt with the using inbuilt connectors, you can automate or you can use external systems to automate based on the workflow and the process needs. Saranan, if you want to add anything. Yeah, Rupak, I think that pretty much sums it up. I just wanted to add one more thing, right? So if you are doing a, a an RPA project, uh, so how process mining helps is that it helps us to uh, choose the areas that are suitable for an RPA automation, right? For RPA, you need high volume cases that are manual Correct. with lower exceptions or uh, lower deviations that are happening. So if you are doing a process mining project it helps us to spot these areas like where can i go for automation directly or where can i go, uh, standardize the process first eliminate the deviation and then go for automation and the second one is as uh, rupak pointed out it helps us to trigger an uh, rpa bots based on certain criteria and conditions mm -hmm. So you can set those conditions in Salonis, and if it satisfies the condition, if the data satisfies the condition, then it can be integrated with an uh, uh, an uh, RPA bot, say UiPath or uh, a Blue Prism kind of a tool from Salonis itself to take certain action based on the condition. So that's how uh, process mining helps with uh, automation. Okay, uh, there are no more questions. Uh, thank you, thank you everyone uh, for your time. Uh, we will meet in the next webinar. Thank you, thank you everyone.
So, uh, Srinidhi, uh, especially, I, I, we are very happy, glad that you uh, had a very good questions and hope you we are able to support and answer your things. But any further queries, please don't hesitate to send us uh, the email. And to everyone uh, out here for the webinar, thanks for your time. And uh, if you if you find or think about anything else in later point of the day, uh, we are here for you to answer any questions or discuss things. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Rupak. Thank you, thank you Neil. Thank, thank you, Karan. Thanks, everyone.